Son. Welcome to St. Luke's, and uh, I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, as we gather here on this Labor Day weekend. I want to wish you all a happy Labor Day weekend and a safe one. Also, uh, just a reminder, today is the first day that we're expanding Children's Church, uh, and so we're at allowing folks all the way up to third grade uh, to go to the open door classroom, and uh, they'll have Children's Church at as the first song is being uh, performed uh, around 9.15 or so, uh, that children's church will begin. So that starts this Sunday and continues on. Uh, also, uh, just a reminder, uh, on your look at the back of your bulletin for me, if you will, uh, in the What's Happening section, uh, the United Women of Faith and the Methodist Men, they met last uh, Monday, and so that meeting won't be until uh, the first Monday in October, and you're all welcome to come and be a part of that. It'll be a six o'clock dinner and a seven o'clock meeting, so uh, that would be in October, so make that note if you would. Also, uh, we'll be closed in the office on Monday in honor of Labor Day, and so uh, if you need anything, call me on my cell phone. Also, um, there's an important mission uh, that is here in St. Louis, and they need about 3,000 volunteers. Yes, I said 1,000. And so if you look under Thursday, the Starving People event uh, begins this week, and it goes uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and uh, they will be uh, at the Kennedy Recreation Center on Wells Road, and if you can go online and register and even give them an hour or two hours of your time, uh, they would be very appreciative of that. Uh, you'll be packing food and doing things for the needy, uh, and it's a great mission opportunity near us, so keep that in mind. Uh, also, uh, next week, uh, our mission here uh, for Sunday School uh, restarts here, uh, and it starts uh, at 10.15 after you grab a snack. Uh, the kids will be going over to uh, the Parkhurst building, and all the elementary are going to meet in the room just to the right of the elevator once you go up to the second level. And then all of the youth, uh, which is middle school and high school, will meet in the youth room. And uh, we'll start that in, next week. So make sure to grab a snack and head on over. Um, also, uh, today is a, a real joy for me, uh, not because yesterday was my birthday, uh, and I survived it, uh, but uh, today I have the unique honor of welcoming four people into the membership of St. Luke's United Methodist Church. So at this time, I'd like to call all four of them forward, uh, and I'd like to visit with you just for a minute. And I'd also enjoy if the congregation would turn in your hymn book to page 35. And uh, if you would do that, please. All right, what a good looking group. Just come right there, perfect. Right here, that's awesome. So uh, I want to present to you uh, Violet Boyette, okay, and she's going to be joining us from Christ Memorial Lutheran Church. Also, uh, Randy Donaldson, okay, Randy. Um, and uh, Karen Going now, I have to. I have to remember your married name, right? And Dominique McLafferty. And so, uh, brothers and sisters in Christ, this is a real joy. And on behalf of the whole church, I just want to ask the four of you right now, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? If so, say, I do. Do you accept the freedom and power that God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? If so, say, I do. Do you 
confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in his grace, and promise to serve him as your Lord in union with the church, which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races, and if so, say, I do. All right. According to the grace given to you, will you remain a faithful member of Christ's holy church and serve as Christ's representatives to the world? If so, say, I will. Body of Christ, I ask you this question. Do you, all of you, as Christ's body, the church, reaffirm both your rejection of sin and your commitment to Christ? Will you nurture one another in the Christian faith and life and include all four of these persons now before you in your care? With God's help, we will proclaim the good news and live according to the example of Christ. We will surround these persons with a community of love and forgiveness that they may grow in their trust of God and be found faithful in their service to others. We will pray for them, and they may be true disciples and walk in the way that leads to life. All right, if you'll also now turn to page 38 in your United Methodist hymnal. We're going to uh, ask Violet this question, okay, as you're coming from another church. Uh, as a member of Christ Universal Church already, will you be loyal to the United Methodist Church and do all in your power to strengthen its ministries? If so, say, I will. Okay. Uh, as members, uh, for all of you, as members of St. Luke's United Methodist Church, will you be faithful to participate in its ministries by your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness, if so say, I will. Okay. All right, church, the members of the household of God, I commend all four of these persons to your love and care. Do all in your power to increase their faith, confirm their hope, and perfect them in love. Will you respond? We give thanks for all that God has already given you. And we welcome you in Christian love as members together with you in the body of Christ and in this congregation of the United Methodist Church. We renew our covenant faithfully to participate in the ministries of the church by our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ, the God of all grace, who has called us to eternal glory in Christ, establish you and strengthen you by the power of the Holy Spirit, that you may live in grace and God's peace. I uh, want to offer you the hand of Christian fellowship and welcome you. And I also have membership certificates uh, for you that you helped to fill out yourselves, okay? And then we helped you with another item, a gift that's inside. All right. Members of the Household of Faith, let's welcome our new members. Okay? Thank you. God bless you. All right. Bruce, we got any music today? I think it's time for us to have some music. All right. Thank you, God, for this time of being together in worship. Thank you for those that have just joined our fellowship here and all the ways that you have gifted them to do ministry among us. And so we ask, Father, your blessing as we go throughout uh, this day that we would keep you in the forefront of our minds. In the blessed name of Jesus, we celebrate. Amen. As you're able, please rise. Let's lift our voices in praise this morning. One, two, three, four. 
Every step of faith, every sacrifice, every prayer that's prayed from an honest heart, you alone deserve every breath of worship. I just want to say how great you are. It's all for you Every song of praise It's all for you Every hand that's raised Everything I am Everything I do Is all for you All for you I want to let you know that you are my hero. I'm a grateful soul that's been redeemed. All creation sings, all the earth adores you. From the highest star to the deepest sea. Cause it's all for you Every song of praise Is all for you Every hand that's raised Everything I am Everything I do Is all for you All for you And it's all for you, every song of praise, it's all for you, every hand that's raised, everything I am, everything I do, is all for you, yes it's all for you, every song of praise, it's all for you. Every hand that's raised, everything I am, everything I do, is all for you, all for you, all for you. It's all for you, all for you. It's all. For you. all for you. It's all for you, all for you. Thank you so much. Please be seated. As we gather now for a time of prayer, uh, there are several uh, to pray for today from the prayer rail. I uh, would like to pray for a co-worker of Dominie's. Uh, her name's Janetta LaRue. And uh, we, we want to uh, praise the Lord that she was able to go home without oxygen but also uh, and released from the hospital, but also as she continues and begins a very uh, difficult treatment schedule uh, to pray for her during her treatments. Also, uh, we have several from the internet community. Uh, we, we want to pray for Althea Hart. Uh, she's having some health issues, uh, and she's an acquaintance of Ramona Schmitz. Also, uh, we want to pray for uh, another acquaintance, uh, Anita Phillips. Uh, Ramona Schmidt called that one in also. Um, do want to keep our friend Brian Blaze, uh, our, the fellow that, that does such a nice job taking care of our, our grass here and things. Uh, his wrist, uh, he had to wait until this coming Wednesday to have it set. So he's, he's uh, really going through some 
some times of waiting. Uh, that's what we're preaching about today. So uh, he is exemplifying that for us. So please pray, pray for Brian Blaze and his surgery and healing. Also, we want to, uh, to lift up today uh, Janine Little and family. Uh, and and they, uh, that has been called in, and they're having some uh, health issues. And so uh, please pray for that family. Let's go to God in prayer, and let's also remember today those on this Labor Day weekend who have, who have labored uh, for us in, in this country to make this country the great country that it is. Let's, let's go to God. Heavenly Father, today we uh, bow before you on this Labor Day weekend, recognizing uh, the blood, the sweat, and the tears that have gone into making this country the great country that it is. And we ask that your continued blessing go on our workers, uh, especially today, our those health care workers that work so hard for us. Uh, we want to continue to lift them up. All of those folks that uh, put their lives on the line for us, uh, especially on the highway departments and all the ways that they uh, try to keep us safe. And there's so many, Lord, just uh, remembering today that uh, working together as Americans, this country is a great country. We also pray, Father, that you will continue to bless and keep those that are going through difficult times, uh, especially keep Janine Little and family, also uh, Janetta as she uh, goes through this cancer treatment, also, Lord, for Althea, and also, Lord, we pray over uh, Brian as he gets ready to have his surgery, and we just pray for uh, his strength and patience during this time and, and for a quick healing. Now, Father, we ask that you'll bless us today as we recognize that you are the head of the church. Uh, we recognize that Christ wrote a prayer to help us to focus our lives, our prayer lives, and so we, we pray that together today, right now. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. How great the chasm that lay between us, how high the mountain I could not climb. In desperation, I turned to heaven and spoke your name into the night. Then through the darkness, your loving kindness tore through the shadows of my soul. The work is finished. The end is written, Jesus Christ, my living hope. Who could imagine so great a mercy? What heart could fathom such boundless grace? The God of ages stepped down from glory to wear my sin and bear my shame. The cross has spoken, I am forgiven. The King of kings calls me his own. 
wonderful Savior, I'm yours forever. Jesus Christ, my living hope. Hallelujah, praise the one who set me free. Hallelujah, death has lost its grip on me. You have broken every chain. There's salvation in your name, Jesus Christ, my living Oh, hallelujah, praise the one who set me free, hallelujah, death has lost its grip on me, you have broken every chain, there's salvation in your name, Jesus Christ, my living hope. Then came the morning that sealed the promise. Your buried body began to breathe. Out of the silence, the roaring lion declared the grave has no claim on me. Then came the morning that sealed the promise your buried body began to breathe out of the silence the roaring lion declared the grave has no claim on me jesus yours is the victory its grip on me you have broken every chain there's salvation in your name jesus christ my living hope hallelujah praise the one who set me free hallelujah death has lost its grip on me you have broken every salvation in your name jesus christ my living hope jesus christ my living hope oh god you are my living As you're able, please rise and join us as we sing. Hymn number 2128 in the thin black hymnal, Come and Find the Quiet Center. Come and find the quiet center in the crowded life we lead. Who upon the cross forsaken offered mercy's perfect deed. We your servants bring the worship, not a voice alone but heart. Consecrating to your purpose every gift that you impart. Silence is a friend who claims us, 
Cools the heat and slows the pace. God it is who speaks and names us, knows our being, touches base. Making space within our thinking, lifting shades to show the sun. Raising courage when we're shrinking, finding scope for faith begun. In the Spirit, let us travel, open to each other's pain. Let our loves and fears unravel, celebrate the space we gain. There's a place for deepest dreaming, there's a time for heart to care. In the Spirit's lively scheming, there is always room to spare. We remain standing as we celebrate our affirmation of faith in the living God. Let's all respond together. We believe that there is one body of Christ working in the world. One Holy Spirit who sustains and comforts. One hope that stirred our hearts when we heard your call. One Lord who has called us here today. One faith that we strive to live up to daily. One baptism that brings each of us into the family of God. One God and creator of all who is over all and through all and in all. We believe that each of us, as a member of God's family, has a calling to fulfill and that in doing so, the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be world without end amen amen of Christ passed down through generations the Son of God teaching us to pray echoed words Father have your will your way in me completely we wholly trust your faithful in provision Amazing grace, mercy for our sins. May we forgive the way that you've forgiven us, O Lord, so we can see our Father, hallowed be your name. Forever our God be exalted. Let your will be done, our Father. Lead 
save us from the valley of temptation. Deliver us from the evil one. Lord, you reign, and here we stand victorious in your name. Together we pray. I'm so happy to be with you. Uh, we're going to finish up the James series today. So if you're kind of following along, we'll be in chapter 5 um, of this very explosive book that gives us such insight into what was going on uh, with the culture of the day. Uh, we're going to talk today about how James was encouraging folks to wait and pray and to uh, be in, in the Lord's timing because of all they've been through. And sometimes I think it's important for us, isn't it? Uh, how many of us here, I, I need to know, really like to wait? Do you like to wait in line? Do you like to wait, you know, for your next birthday? No. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah, some of you are okay with that. Well, um, one of the things that uh, we want to encourage you to do is think about um, how important it is for us to wait. 
if you go to a stop sign, you're used to hear, seeing it say stop, right? Well, sometimes, isn't this the same thing? I mean, you got to wait there for a while until it's your turn to go. Uh, so it might as well be a wait sign. And sometimes God puts up the wait sign for us as Christians. Uh, and so I think it's important for us to kind of think about that. Uh, maybe there's times when we need to just wait on God's timing. I know you love this symbol when you're working on your computers. Anybody ever see that little thing that continues to... Does that make you happy? No, I, I think it's a universal no out there. It's really hard because sometimes we are, we're so focused and we want to get so much done. And even the internet says, uh, you got to wait till we catch up with you. Okay. And so that symbol reminds me. Now, when I was a kid, there was another symbol that reminded me of waiting. Anybody remember this? <laughs> Come on now. And, and th when they sang the song, anticipation was about seven syllables. Right, anticipate, you were, you were just ready for that jingle to be done. How many of you have ever been to a restaurant and see somebody beating on these ketchup bottles? And, and if you're not careful, you can have a real mess on your hands. You've got to know the science behind it and keep it kind of tilted slightly, not straight up and down. Uh, that just reminds me of, of when I was a kid. I didn't like to wait uh, for that ketchup to come out of the bottle. Well, uh, today I think it's important for us to think about what it means to wait because as a verb it means to stay in kind of a place of expectation. Uh, it, it's, to, it's to hold back knowing something's getting ready to happen. Yeah, the ketchup will eventually get out of that bottle, right? But knowing uh, in anticipation and expectation, it, the noun uh, wait means a state of attitude, of watchfulness and expectancy. So I, I love the way that Merriam-Webster kind of terms this because I, I immediately go to the expectancy of the second coming of Jesus Christ. We're expected to wait, right? And, and we're expected, though, to wait with an attitude of expectancy. We know it's going to happen, all right? We have no doubt in our mind that what the Bible says is true. And, it, and over all the prophecies, over all the, all the centuries, all those prophecies about Jesus, remember, over hundreds of those prophecies from the Old Testament came true. We know it's going to come true that Christ will come again. We say that in our, in, and we'll say that here in a little bit in our communion ceremony, that we believe in that second coming. So to wait is not always a bad thing because what we've got to do is say, I'm going to wait because I'm waiting on God's timing. And God's timing is always perfect always perfect. So uh, just keep in mind, uh, waiting is something, you see them standing on the sidewalk six feet apart with the little lines. Anybody here have to stand outside of a store here in St. Louis? And was that a fun experience during COVID? And, and you were waiting with expectancy to get in that, in that building to get in to get your sh shopping done, but that was that was kind of a way for us to think about, man, sometimes it's just really hard uh, for us to wait. In the book of Psalm, the 37th chapter, the 7th verse, it reminds us, it says, Be still before the Lord. And do what? Wait. Wait patiently for him. Do not fret over those who prosper in their way, over those who carry out even evil devices. Um, you know, the thing about this is it's the two things don't always go together. Wait patiently. Do we sometimes, we don't like to wait. Uh, we don't want to be patient. We, we want a drive-through kind of experience. 
How many of you get upset if you're in a drive through window and it takes too long to get your burger and fries? It's hard. I mean, you're sitting there, gas is three bucks a gallon or more, and you're sitting there idling away, and that hamburger now is going to cost you about $10 by the time you wait to get it, right? We aren't very patient about these things. We really need to, we need to think about this psalm and say, okay, we need to wait patiently on him, on God, okay? Uh, let's, let's turn in our book of James to chapter 5. We're going to look, starting at verse 7 today, and it says these, these beautiful words. It says, be patient, therefore, brothers and sisters, until the coming of the Lord. The farmer waits for the precious crop from the earth, being patient with it until it receives the early and the late rains. You must also be patient, strengthening your hearts, for the coming of the Lord is near. James is pointing out uh, lots of things here. We're going we're to go down to the ninth verse. We're going to talk some more about what he, what he wants us to wait for. Brothers and sisters, do not grumble against one another so that you may not be judged. See, the judge is standing at the doors. As an example of suffering and patience, brothers and sisters, take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. Indeed, we call blessed those who showed endurance. You know, the prophets would, would do their work and be speaking the words of God to the people, and it would not happen like that. It might happen over five or six years' time. But yet, with endurance, they were patient, they waited. I think of Jonah and some of these, these prophets that went through some impatience while they were waiting. So there are some things that are really worth the wait. And so let's look at a few of those that's, that is being brought out by James. James says the second coming of the Lord is worth the wait. All right? It is worth it. And we have to be patient and do that uh, waiting in God's timing. Uh, provisions needed for the harvest. Uh, my, my son-in-law, his father is a, is a very successful farmer and it is amazing as I talk to him about how sometimes your crops you have to wait for the right moisture level of your corn to be able to harvest it or else you don't get full amount of money for your harvest. Uh, you have to wait uh, for the produce uh, in your garden or else you're not going to be eating the mature fruit. I mean, there's so many things that this, this really brings to my mind. It, sometimes it's worth the wait for that tomato to turn from green to red because I like red tomatoes. Okay? Got it? <laughs> Peace among people is worth waiting for. Uh, you know, when we pray for peace, and we pray for peace among nations, we pray for peace among each other, we, we pray for all of these things, uh, it is worth the wait. And also, the prophetic word of God coming through the prophets uh, being completed, that is worth the wait, because we know, without a shadow of a doubt, those words are true. The prophetic words uh, coming through those prophets, they, and we can prove that out uh, from generation to generation. And our generation just has to continue to wait for some of the prophetic word to continue to completion. All right, so uh, there's one of my favorite scriptures, and this is something I will talk to folks about sometimes when I do a hospital visit, and that's Isaiah 40, 30 and 31. You might want to remember that scripture verse because it's so important when a person is waiting to get well or when they're waiting you know for that next diagnosis or next treatment cycle even youth will faint and be weary and the young will fa fall exhausted uh, help me read these bold words but those who wait for the Lord they shall renew their strength they shall mount up with wings like eagles they shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not be faint. You hear the hope in that? There is so much hope. This is coming from one of those prophets 
you know, that says there will be a time of hope. And we sang about hope this morning as we uh, opened up this morning. Uh, waiting is a way for us to show not only our patience, but our strength. And our strength in our relationship with God. And so it says, wait for the Lord in Psalms 20. Seven, it says, wait for the Lord, be strong, and let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord. You know, it's, it's inbred into us as Christians to trust in the Lord's provision for our life. It's inbred in us as Christians to, to have faith in God's promises over our life. It's inbred into us as Christians to be patient and wait for God's perfect timing. It's important for us to remember that's a part of our strength. That's a part of us being uh, confident in our relationship with the living God. There are times in our life when we need prayer. And I just want to remind you, we have a prayer room that's open. Uh, Kathy Reed's on duty today uh, before church for 15 minutes before uh, after you leave this place, if you want to pray about something or have Kathy pray over you for healing or whatever, uh, you can go to the prayer room, just the, the first door on the right in the hallway there, and, and she'll be there for, for as long as she's needed. But the thing is, uh, there's times when the prayer of, of, a, of our generation needs to be for the next generation. There's times when we need to sit down and pray over someone who's sick and ask God's provision of health for them. And so if you need that prayer, it's, it is perfectly okay for us to recognize how prayer helps us to wait through some times that are difficult. And we've all faced those, and we'll face them again and again. But prayer helps us to wait. Uh, James was reminding the people uh, in the 13th and 14th verses, says, are any among you suffering? They should pray. Are any cheerful? They should sing songs of praise. And Are any among you sick? They should call for the elders of the church and have them pray over them, anointing them with oil in the name of the Lord. There's some important things in here because there's some action waiting going on here. There's some things to do. Prayer is an action to do while we're waiting. Singing is an action to do uh, while we're praising. You know, there, James is, is trying to encourage a whole group of, of folks that are followers of Christ to keep the action in their waiting. Uh, he goes on to say, as we kind of finish this up, the prayer of faith will save the sick and the Lord will raise them up. Hear that? It's the Lord's doing. And we, it's important for us to pray, but we also recognize who is the one that's our healer, and that's the Lord. Okay? Uh, therefore, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, the prayer of faith will save the sick and the Lord will raise them up and anyone who has committed sins will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another so that you may be healed. The prayer of the righteous is powerful and effective. Church, we've got some work to do. We've got some people to pray over. We've got, we've got our faith to build up and to build up with all of those around us. We've got some work to do. There's a lot of power in prayer. I mean, we can pray for things like, like healing, uh, and it's God's the healer. And, and there's, there is so much power in prayer. Uh, someone walked in today and says there's power in prayer, okay? Because they had felt that healing in their life. Just, just as they were walking in today, they were talking about that. We also have... Prayers of confession, uh, where we come before a holy God and say, God, I've messed up, just like we, the four that were here joining St. Luke's today. God, I you know, ask for forgiveness if there's sin in my life. That's an important prayer. 
And that forgiveness is something that we ask for from God knowing that we serve a God of love, knowing we serve a God of grace, knowing a God that will heal us as we, as we need healing in mind, body, spirit, and relationships. God can heal in those zones too. So uh, what's the prayer of faith look like? Uh, one of the things that uh, I want us to think about is how that becomes an expression of our trust in a loving, generous, all-knowing, and a sovereign God in our lives. It is, the prayer of faith is evidence of trust in God, okay? Uh, prayer of faith is, say, leaving our prayers uh, and our request in God's capable hands. D does anyone here believe God can answer prayer? Yes or no? I believe with my whole heart and I'm, at, I'm standing for you as evidence that God has answered a lot of prayers in my life, or I wouldn't even be able to stand. Uh, God has answered healing prayers. God has forgiven me of my sin. God has healed me. All of those things that we, we had just mentioned. God has, has worked in my life. And uh, so I want you to know that those prayers of faith are actions while we're waiting on God, knowing that we believe God can do these things. We submit to God's will and timing and not just fall back on our own. And so that's a prayer of faith too, is God in your perfect timing, in your will, as, as we wait, I, you know, we are going to be patient and, uh, and listen for your voice. James finishes up that says the prayer of right, the righteous is powerful and effective. And so I think as we gather together as brothers and sisters in Christ and we are binding ourselves in prayer for each other, we're going to grow closer to each other. I believe as righteous prayer goes up uh, that we are binding our relationship and our trust in the living God and our faith will be stronger. I believe the prayer of the righteous is the best thing that all of us uh, can put our minds to as we wait for God's second coming. Let's go to God in prayer. Heavenly Father, uh, today as, as these words have been, have been presented from the book of James, we're thankful for them. And we ask, Father, that in those times of waiting, in those times of patience, may, uh, may we just... Uh, recognize how much that we can place our trust in our daily lives to you how much we can place our trust in your healing power how much we can place our trust in that forgiving uh, mercy that you show over our lives and shine over us your grace is sufficient as the lord thank you so much you have blessed us beyond all blessing, in the blessed name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our living Savior, we pray. Amen. Today is a, a, a day of us recognizing Holy Communion. And so as we come together, I'm going to ask my communion stewards if they'd make their way forward at this time as we prepare the table. The responses for you will be seen on the screen. The Lord be with you. <laughs> Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and a joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. And when we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through your prophets. 
who look for that day when justice shall roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. When nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join in their unending hymn, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. Your spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. <clears throat> he healed the sick, fed the hungry, and ate with sinners. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. At his ascension, you exalted him to sit and reign with you at your right hand. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this as often as you do it in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is the blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you do it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and a living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we now proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Let's join our hearts in prayer. Dear God, Pour out your Holy Spirit on all of us gathered here and on these gifts of bread in the cup. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. Lord, by your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. As you gather for communion today, we'll have ushers that will help you to form one line in the center. Uh, as you come forward, you'll be offered a piece of the loaf. Uh, representing the body of Christ given for you. Then if you'll go to the side that you're seated on, one of our stewards will offer you an individual cup representing the blood of Christ that, is, that was given for you. And so uh, there are receptacles at both ends of our communion rail for you to put your cups in when you finish your time of communion. Uh, please... Uh, Return to your seats by the side aisle in a, an attitude of prayer as your brothers and sisters are communing today. In the United Methodist Church, uh, we uh, honor children, and we believe that children should not be barred from the communion table. And so uh, in that great tradition, at the direction of a parent or a guardian, children are, are welcomed here. And... And also, we want to make sure that everyone knows that uh, whether you're a member here or not, is, this is the table of Jesus Christ. You do not have to be a member of this church 
uh, just come and receive uh, the blessing of the Holy Spirit in these elements as you would come today uh, and, and join with us today. given for you. Okay. Alan, the body. The Savior alone carried the cross for all of my debts. He paid the cost, salvation complete. Now forever I'm free. Calvary covers it all. my 
Thank you, God, for this holy mystery, this communion that we've received, and the Holy Spirit that you freely give us as we believe in you. Lord, it just blows our minds how much grace you have shown to us. And so, Lord, we thank you for it. In the blessed name of Jesus, amen. Please rise as we offer our response to God today. If you are lonely, when you feel afraid, you're not the only, we are all the same, in need of mercy, to be forgiven and be free, it's all you got to lean on, but thank God it's all you need, and all the people say amen, oh, 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 oh. and all the people say amen. Give thanks to the Lord for his love never ends. And all the people say amen. If you're rich or poor, well, it don't matter. We are strong, you know, love is what we're after. We're all broken, but we're all in this together. God knows we stumble and fall. And he so loved the world, he sent his son to save us all. And all the people said amen. Whoa, oh, oh, oh. and all the people said amen. Give thanks to the Lord for his love never ends. And all the people said amen. Blessed are the poor in spirit who are torn apart. Blessed are the persecuted and the pure in heart. Blessed are the people hungry for another start. For this is the kingdom, the kingdom of God. And all the people say amen. Oh, oh, oh. And all the people say amen. Give thanks to the Lord, for his love never ends. And all the people say amen. Whoa! And all the people say amen. Whoa! And all the people say amen. Give thanks to the Lord, for his love never ends. And all the people say amen. And all the people say amen. Good to see you all today. Please be safe this week. Have a wonderful week. We'll see you next Sunday. Before.